where would we be if it wasn't for you? So many things would have been different if it wasn't for your saving grace. You didn't find us, Lord. Where would we be this morning? And as a church, we are so grateful for where you have brought us to. We thank you for the good days and the bad days. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have seen us through. And so this morning, we come with grateful hearts. We enter your gates with thanksgiving. We enter your courts with praise. Father, we want to meet with you this morning. God, we want to have an encounter with you that our lives will never be the same. So I pray for the church this morning, God, that we will not withhold what belongs to you, but we will give you our all, our everything. For you deserve everything, because all that we are and all that we will ever have is from you. So Lord, as we come to your table, we thank you, God, for the covenant that you made with us. You said you will never leave us nor forsake us. You are with us even till the ends of the earth. And so, Lord, as we come to partake from your broken body and the blood of the Lamb, we thank you. Your blood has not lost its power. Come on, somebody. The blood of Jesus has not lost its power. It reaches to the lowest valley. It reaches to the highest mountain. And so, God, whatever it is that is going on in our lives, the blood has the power to break every stronghold, to loose every captive. The blood has the power to heal and deliver. So I pray today, Lord, even as we make covenant with you, you're a covenant keeping God. And so you are a broken body. You were broken so that we would be made whole in every area of our lives. And so I pray whatever is missing, whatever was going on in our lives today, God, as we come to the table, as a family, God, put the pieces together. Put it all together, Lord, in our lives that we will never be the same again. As Father, even as we come to bring our tithes and our offerings before you, we thank you, Lord, for faithfulness. Lord, you, all you command us to be is faithful. And so I pray today, Lord, that we will be obedient and faithful to all that you have placed in our hands. You said that we ought to purpose in our hearts what we ought to bring to you and not to give to you grudgingly but willingly with a cheerful heart and so i pray as abraham brought a tithe to melchizedek melchizedek brought bread and wine so we do today as your people will come and bring a tithe of all lord we will give and administer the bread and wine as the deacons will take their place as we get ready to come to the table there's strength and peace and power in the table. Can I hear an amen? Deacons move quickly. Please. Hallelujah. And then they said to him, Matthew 14, 17, We have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples gave to the multitudes he blessed he broke and he gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples gave to the multitudes so they all ate and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides the women and the children as you come to the table this morning don't focus on what you have lost. Focus on what you have left. Can I hear an amen? There's a miracle in giving thanks to God. Luke chapter 22, the Bible says that he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he said, take this and divide it among yourself. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. So likewise, we also today acknowledge the table of the Lord. So as you come with your families, come and partake of the communion and bring your tithe and your offering to the altar. We're going to worship the Lord together. Amen. Thank you, beloved.
blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh, fourth man in the fire time after time born of his spirit washed in his and what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough I trust in God my Savior the one who will never fail oh, He will never fail I trust I trust in God my Savior the one who will never fail He will never fail Perfect submission All is at I know I know the offer of tomorrow Has ordered my steps So this is my story
are so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, oh yes, Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11 this is a short portion of scripture we read it and pray together and then you may take your seats we apologize for the power not coming back on so we still on generated so we cannot turn the air conditioning on but you'll be okay amen you'll be okay first Corinthians 13 verse 11 Paul says when I was a child you can read the word of the Lord with me amen when I was a child I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, 
I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also am known. And now abideth faith, hope, come on everybody, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Father, may you bless the, your word unto our hearts. May it be raiment to us, Lord, not just logos. May our lives be transformed, changed by your word this morning. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand, would you? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Would you give our worship team a good God bless you? Were you blessed by the worship this morning? Amen. We were so blessed and thank God for them. Uh, before I go into the word, I want to welcome uh, Stephen and Jenna Frank. Good to have you, your two beautiful children. Give them a good God bless you. Amen. Well, they know strangers to us. Uh, Jenna is the daughter of Gerald. Gerald is the son of Mom Nirmala. That was a faithful member of Praise Church. Amen. Jenna's grandmother, and we remember her fondly and dearly. And so it's good to see you. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. No, but no one else visiting us? Amen. All the church families here. Well, praise the Lord. And just a reminder, today the ladies are going on the high tea at 2 p.m. at uh, Springside in Hillcrest. You can speak to my wife about that. That's at 2 p.m. And then next Sunday, everyone say next Sunday, is the first Sunday of December. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Amen. We in December, and uh, my wife, she didn't sleep all night, all morning. She came home at 6 o'clock in this morning. And so would you give my wife a good God bless you for all that she does for the house of God. Amen. I was very, very upset. But anyway, uh, that's just the husband being upset. Amen. But she did all this so that the house of the Lord could be beautiful for Christmas. Amen. And so it's Thanksgiving. Everyone say it's Thanksgiving. During our, uh, our Thanksgiving service, we always bring an offering to God. Amen. Because God has been good to us. Would you say amen to that? Has God been good to you? Well, if you hear, God's been good to you. Amen. And so we bring an offering before the Lord. We also bring uh, groceries and uh, whatever food uh, stuff that uh, we want to give. And so I said to the team, there's already uh, items that have been filled on the list. But I said that whatever you want to bring, because I don't want anyone to feel left out because the list is full and everybody has given. I want everyone to feel a part of giving. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. I'll never forget Stephen who gave me hampers. Uh, when was that? COVID or was it uh, the, the, the looting? I can't remember, but I picked up from your office, remember? Hampers, and we gave out. So it's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. And I think that was just an initiative from the business, am I right? It wasn't a, a, a religious group or church group, but they were giving out food to those in need. And so we're going to do that. And so whatever you do, uh, speak to Seshni. She'll put your name down on your list, whatever you want to do. I think we're preparing 16 hampers. But if it goes more, all the better. Amen. We always start from within and then we go out to, uh, from within the house because we have to take care of our family also. Amen. And then go out. So bring in your hampers next week, Sunday, 9.30 a.m. And we're going to give thanks to God. And then in the evening, we're going to have a Thanksgiving dinner. Can I hear an amen for that? Hallelujah. It is completely free to you. Uh, but... We want you to please tell us you're coming. Don't be quiet, okay? Tell us you're coming, not coming, whatever it is. That is to next Sunday evening, uh, Jermaine, the next Sunday evening slide at 4 p.m. Is it 4 p.m.? At that Thanksgiving, we'll be giving gifts to our children, awards. Our Sunday school will give out to our kids. Uh, they have a good time. You know, the kids love gifts, Amen. And then we also appreciate our leaders and our workers. And then we'll have a meal of, and fellowship together. So we're starting at 4, so we can serve dinner around 6, 6.30. Amen? 
So don't miss it. Be a part of it. Okay? Be a part of it. This is for you, beloved. Everything we do is because of you. We love you and we want to uh, make you feel a part of the life of the church. It's what you want to receive from the church is what you receive. Amen? So if you want to be a part of it, join in and be a part of it uh, next Sunday. And then we'll tell you, uh, many of you got already the announcements and the special dates on, your, on the WhatsApp group. Amen? As, as we go to the Word this morning, I feel a, an awesome responsibility as your pastor to instruct you. Amen? Do you know that when we were growing up, our parents often told us things we didn't want to hear? Anybody say amen to that? They, they gave us tough love, right? They corrected us, they rebuked us. And oftentimes in the church, when the word comes across strong, we get offended by the word. Now everybody say, I will not be offended by the word of God. It is the infallible truth of God's word. Amen. So I received the word. What you should be doing is the word brings correction, brings rebuke. Amen. And so don't ever come for a feel good word, but come like I told you last week for a rhema word. Everyone say a rhema word. Where when the Logos word is preached, let there be a rhema word that will come to you. The rhema word is birth in the spirit. So God will speak to you. Through his Holy Spirit. And make the word rhema. Living. Everyone say living. Active. Hallelujah. In your life. That's what you need. An active word. And so I feel very strongly that the church needs to understand. That we cannot just be. We cannot grow. You cannot grow on milk. Even, even the word of the Lord says that. You have to move from the milk to the meat. Can I hear Amen. You have to grow up. Everyone say grow up. If you don't grow up, you won't move up. You won't fulfill everything that God has for you. And I, I strongly believe as a church, I want to see a church growing and moving forward with God. I want you to fulfill everything that God has for you. Hallelujah. I don't want you to miss what God has for you. Amen. So I want to speak to you about destiny. Everyone say destiny. Every one of us have a destination. Every one of us have a destiny. But there are things that happen along the way that stop us from achieving our destination or, or fulfilling our destiny. But God wants you to fulfill your destiny. Can I hear an amen? It's like when you leave home and you have a destination to a certain place. But things happen along the way. And oftentimes, you may not even get to where you wanted to be. Anybody can identify? Isn't that so? So it's not always that you start off to want to go somewhere that you get there. Isn't that so? And it's the same in the spirit. There are many people that started off saying that this is where I feel destined to be. But you have not gone there. You have not achieved that. Are you, are you listening to me this morning? And many times we use excuses. We blame people. We blame the circumstances of our lives. We do all kinds of things. Yet God has prepared everything. Can I hear an amen? Everything to fulfill the destiny and the plan he has for you. God uses everything. Come on somebody. God uses all the mistakes. God uses the mess ups. God uses the people. God uses all those things to fulfill what he has planned for us. Hallelujah. I need a better amen this morning. Just because you're destined does not mean you will get there. But you cannot make an excuse. It's time to grow up. Everyone say grow up. It's time to mature. Everyone say mature. Because destiny doesn't happen despite us. It happens because of us. Oh, come on somebody. Destiny doesn't just happen. It just doesn't fall from the sky. You understand? It happens because of us. And many times we use the things that are happening around us to excuses for stopping us to get to our destiny. 
But it's not the things around us. It's the things within us. Oh, you didn't hear me. It's the things within us that stop us from getting to where God wants us to be. Would you say big amen? I, I need a better amen. Paul is wrapping up his love letter. He speaks about love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. All of you know it very well. But he wraps it up and says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, come on somebody, I put away childish things. Everyone say, put away. I put away childish things. When I became a man, that word man means mature. It means to grow up. It means when I became. It speaks about development, reaching a place or striving for a place. Everything that you're going through, everything that you've been through is preparation for maturity. Everyone say preparation for maturity. Beloved, if you don't go through what you go through, you will never mature. And I'm talking spiritually. Is anybody listening to me? I'm talking spiritually. If you don't go through what you go through, you will never mature. You will stay a baby Christian. Hallelujah. And you will never fulfill your destiny. But God has predestined a destiny for you. Tell your neighbor, God has predestined destiny for you. Destiny is a predetermined cause of events designed to happen to a person. Everyone say predetermined. Cause of events designed to happen to a person. Destiny is everything that has happened in your life to bring you to where you are. Oh, come on somebody. So sometimes you think, man, I messed up. I took the wrong, I made the wrong decision. I went the wrong way. And you, and you, and you think, man, you messed up and it's not going to come together. Don't you know that life is like a puzzle? It's like a puzzle, the pieces of the puzzle that all need to come together. And God orchestrates these things. Come on, church, help me. God orchestrates the bad moments. God orchestrates the disappointed moments. Some of you looking back at 2023 and saying, it was a bad year for me. It was a, a, a hopeless year. Why don't you look back and say, thank you, God, for bringing me through this year. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for getting me through that when I didn't get paid. Come on, somebody. When they, when they let me down, when people hurt me, oh, come on, church. When I got sick or, or when something happened to you, why don't you say thank you, God, for putting all of those pieces together to orchestrate what you have destined for me? Amen. Because God will sometimes deliberately bring people to betray you. Oh, hallelujah. They will, he will set you up for people to betray you. Whoa, you didn't want to hear that. You didn't want to hear that. But God will bring people to betray you like he did for Jesus. They will falsely accuse you. They will make up a story about you. Anybody here can identify Anybody here can identify, shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. They will make all kinds of things against you. Why? Because he doesn't want you to stay a, a, a child. He wants you to become a man. Hallelujah. He wants you to mature. Can I hear an amen? I don't know about you, but I've been in church so long that I am tired of baby Christians. Hey, hallelujah. And baby Christians... Doesn't mean uh, uh, that you just got saved. You understand? I'm not talking about when you just come into the faith and you just start to uh, trust God. I'm talking about people that have been in the faith for a long time but have not matured. Come on now. They have not matured. They have not grown up. They have not prepared themselves. Come on. They have not prepared themselves. And they don't understand that. See, let me say this to you. When God brings you out of something, you ought to not live in regret. Are you with me? Don't regret what happens. Thank God for bringing you out. Amen. Stop complaining and murmuring. 
and making excuses and blaming so and so and blaming your husband and blaming your wife and blaming everybody even the church okay grow up come on somebody say grow up mature hallelujah have you ever been to stuff in this year that you couldn't believe you would ever go through come on have you ever been to stuff in your life that you never thought you'd ever experience hallelujah you never thought you lose your job you never thought you lose your home you never thought you get sick oh come on somebody help me you never thought like me i'd lose my family that my family would die i never thought that it ever happened to me but god uses everything uh, that i've been through uh, in the years gone by uh, to bring me to my destiny hallelujah because if you still living uh, that means god is not done hallelujah if you're not dead uh, god is not done come on somebody if you are not dead uh, you are not done uh, that means you still have to move uh, towards uh, your destiny you have to move towards your purpose uh, i am purpose driven i'm destiny driven i'm not driven by the circumstances uh, and the failures uh, and everything that comes in my way uh, i will not be distracted uh, tell your neighbor i will not be distracted I will not be distracted. Hallelujah. I will praise the Lord in the good times and in the bad times. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my lips hallelujah so some of you saying i got nothing to give thanks to god for you may, maybe you don't have money in your bank you don't have food in your home but whatever you have give thanks for hallelujah bless the lord everyone say bless the lord you're not thanking god for what you have you're thanking god for who he is he's a provider he's a mighty deliverer come on somebody He's a mighty God. He's able to deliver you. Can I hear an amen this morning? Tell your neighbor he's able to deliver you. See, it can either make you better or bitter. Tell your neighbor it can either make you better or bitter. But you have to trust God in the process. Sometimes God has to allow certain people. Oh, church, come on somebody. To disappoint you. They will bring you up to a point, and I've been there. I have been there, I can tell you, firsthand. They will take you up, like you know, that somebody said, they'll make you a hero, and then tomorrow they'll make you a zero. Why? Because you trust in people. But God allows those things to happen. Because if God didn't allow that to happen in my life, I would be so dependent on people. I will so be so dependent on money. Oh, come on now. Because I was in a position where people would trust me. And people would come and pour tens of thousands into my hands for the kingdom. And so if I became dependent on them. Oh, come on somebody. I would never mature to trust God. To believe God. That God, you can do it. Because man is not my source, but God is my source. Man didn't predestine me. God destined me. I have a destiny in God. I have a purpose in God. And everything that I've been through has brought me to this place to come to my destination. Hallelujah. I'm going to my destination destination praise church are you coming with me i'm going to my destination i'm not gonna fail i'm not gonna give up it doesn't matter how long it takes i'm gonna persist oh can i hear that man i'm gonna persist we could have we could have given up many times my wife and i could have given up many times we had open doors to go overseas i got even a, a, an acceptance in, in america i'm talking about now i'm not talking about those days i'm talking about now but we will not give up on our destiny hallelujah just because we had a setback come on now church just because we lost some money you know some of us we lose money we think somebody died come on now we behave like somebody died i've heard i've learned money is not everything oh come on church Money is not everything. Don't, don't put your trust in money. 
Oh, tell your neighbor, don't put your trust on, on money. Hallelujah. Because of he, if he doesn't, you won't move. You won't shift. If you don't get out of your comfort zone, hallelujah, hallelujah, you will never move. You will never shift. That's why people will come. They will lie about you. They will break your heart. Oh, hallelujah. They will upset your comfort zone. Huh? Come on, say amen, somebody. Uh, that's why it happens. So when it does happen, you don't be vindictive. You don't try to get back at them because God used them for your good. Hallelujah. Because success is not measured by things. It's about destiny. It's finding what God has destined you for and bringing yourself into alignment with him and moving towards your destiny. It's about fulfillment. Somebody say fulfillment. It's about finding your niche, your lane. Oh, come on somebody. Don't get all burnt up running in somebody else's lane, trying to fulfill somebody else's purpose and destiny when God has a destiny for you. Do you believe that this morning? And I'm, am I preaching to anybody this morning that God has a destiny for you? Don't look at me and don't try and run in my lane. You run in your lane. You run in the purpose that God has for you. Amen. I was on a radio thing the other day. And the, the, the pastor asked me, what advice would you give young ministers? I thought I was still a young minister. He's asking me to give advice. So that means I'm old. <laughs> Amen. Well, I've been around the block a little bit. Amen. But I said, I said, don't compete with anybody. Don't look at somebody and try to be like them. Because one of the mistakes even I made is you look at other big shot pastors and you want to be like them. They, am I right? So you want to drive a Mercedes Benz when a BMW is better. That's kind. Eh? Yeah. But you know, you know what I'm saying? You want to preach like them. You want to run their race. Oh, come on somebody. When Paul says, run the race set before you, not the race set before them, and you get burnt out. Now, let me say this, Bradley smiling at me. Business people do the same. Am I right, Brad? They look at other businesses in the same industry, and they want to compete with them. So they are doing those structures, for example. They are good dog in those contexts. So they want to jump in that lane. When God never called them to jump in that lane. Hallelujah. You were supposed to be in your lane. Am I right, Eugene? You are supposed to run your race. Oh, come on. Don't get frustrated. Don't get set back. Don't be distracted. And even if you fail, beloved, everything God will use. Uh, tell your neighbor, God will use. Uh, uh, help me, church. Come on, say God will use. Uh, because he has a destiny for you. Uh, he's the one that predestined you. That's why you spend time with him. Come on. Uh, that's why you talk to him. Uh, that's why the more you get with God, uh, you don't look for the man's applause. Uh, you look for God's applause. Uh, one of the other things I said, uh, don't ever, I had that mistake. Uh, I looked for man's approval. Every time I did, you, you know, I was a worship leader for many, many years. I led worship. Uh, uh, for multiple service in a mega church. And I also always look for man of my man of God to say, well done. You did a good job. And when he didn't, I used to get upset. I used to feel unappreciated. Anybody you know what I'm talking about? You act like you don't feel that way. You are wonderful people. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? It's like when you cook the food, mother, wife, and you're expecting them, them to clap, shout, jump, kiss you all over and say, thank you so much for this food. But they just come eat and they're gone. Am I right? So are you doing it because you want them to say thank you? Not that I'm saying you mustn't say thank you. Please don't get me wrong. But are you doing it because that's what you're called to do? You understand? This is my lane. My lane, Eugene, this is your lane. Your lane is a worship leader, is a psalmist. Don't you ever get confused by what anybody else tells you. You're called to do that. Oh, come on, somebody. 
You don't have to be intimidated by anybody else. Hallelujah. You don't even need my approval because you got God's approval. Hallelujah. God's purpose you. He's destined you. The Bible says your gift will make room for you. It will bring you before great men. Hallelujah. God will open doors for you because you're looking to him, not to man. Get close to God. Tell your neighbor, get close to God. Amen. Every good opportunity. Write this down. Every good opportunity is not necessarily a God opportunity. Learn that because many of us have made mistakes even in this year because it's a good opportunity, but it's not necessarily a God opportunity. Know what you were born for. Jeremiah 29, 11, you know it. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expectant end. I have an expectant end for you. God has thoughts for you. Hallelujah. Will you give to give you an expectant end? God is saying, I know what I have in mind for you. What I created you for. Come on, somebody. And they are not thoughts of evil, but of peace to give you an expectant end. To bring you to your destiny people think that god is upset with them people are thinking that god is trying to get back at them god will never get back at you amen hallelujah praise the lord something's rumbling here amen i think your sound did they put it off say god what is not after you tell your neighbor god's not after you god thinks good thoughts thoughts of peace not of evil God never thinks evil towards you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Come on, somebody. God is not coming after you. Amen. It may look like things are going wrong, but God is not after you. You went off track. You understand? You did something wrong. So even if you've done something wrong, God doesn't stop loving you. Somebody needs to say amen for that. So don't get offended by God. God wants you to get better. He wants to reveal his plan for you. I pray that 2024, you will, you will walk closely to God. That you will get your purpose and your destiny. That you will get prepared for what God has for you. And grow up. Tell your neighbor, grow up. Mature. Hallelujah. If he loves you, he's not going to lie to you. Let me say this to you. If I love you, I'll tell you the truth. Amen. If I don't care... I'll bluff you and say, no, it's okay. Amen. But if I really love you, I'll tell you, Sandy, your hair doesn't look good today. You know what I'm saying? You need to go and sort it out. Sandy, we need to send you to the hairdresser. I'm, not, I'm just using you as an example. <laughs> She's getting worried now. <laughs> you understand? What if I don't like you? It doesn't mean anything to me. Whether your is upside down or good. You understand? But if I love you and that's what God does to us. Amen. He corrects us. He shows us. He reveals it. Even sometimes it's the most hardest thing. But you have to go through it. Hallelujah. God thoughts good about you. God thinks good about you. Say amen. That's why I want you to know today, beloved. That's why you can never end any better than you think. Oh, come on somebody. You can never end up any better than you think. If you think you're not going to make it, I promise you, you won't make it. If you think you're not going to make it to 2024, you won't make it. You probably won't. Uh, can I hear an amen? Because you're thinking that way. Start today to refrain from the way you think. Hallelujah. Find what God built you for. What God shaped you for. What God fashioned you for. And sometimes... It's not the best of things. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you don't understand why it's happening that way. But God has a plan. Tell your neighbor, God has a plan. Did this mic go off? It's on. Amen. You understand that? Like, like a woman. When I married my wife, she was like a supermodel. But when she had children, things changed. Isn't that so? No, I'm just saying, everybody, all of you women, say amen. amen. Isn't that so? Come on now. But God created you that way. God, he forms you 
to prepare you for the baby. You understand? The hips get bigger. And other things get bigger too. I don't want to say anything I'm preaching yet. Amen. But imagine us thinking about this elder. If the hips didn't get bigger, the baby would just fall off. In it so? I could, especially Joshua, I used to be bugged. A few minutes, I couldn't carry him. My back, my hands, everything is painting, it's twitching and all kinds of things. I feel like I strained myself. But she used to carry our children for hours. Hours. And they big heavy babies. Why? Because God gave you the hips for it. So accept the form. Oh, come on somebody. I'm bringing a point. I, I listen to the point. You see, God knows the form. Because the form is for a purpose. Ah, come on church, help me. Amen. Because otherwise the baby will fall down. Who's going to carry the baby? Who's going to nurse that baby? Come on, woman. Come on. You know what pastor's talking about. So you worried about what happened? Woo, what happened to your supermodel shape? Don't worry. You got a purpose. So accept what God formed you. Oh, can I hear it? Amen. Accept what God formed you. And appreciate what God has done. Hallelujah. Yeah, can I get a better amen today? Hallelujah. Find your shape. Tell your neighbor, find your shape. What you built for. Hallelujah. That's what God made you for. I'm tired of following other people's parts. I want to be where I, God has for me. Hallelujah. I want to I want to finish what God put me in. If you woke up this morning, he's not finished with you. Hallelujah. I said if you woke up this morning, God's not finished with you. Hallelujah. If your life is not over, you are not finished. I had to accept that. If God didn't take me in COVID, God is not finished with me. The reason why I'm not dead uh, is because God is not done. Hallelujah. Say, I am not dead uh, because God is not done. Say it again. I am not dead uh, because God is not done with me. Hallelujah. Because God's going to use everything in my life. By the way, I was sharing about my family and how I handled the loss of my family on radio. And there were hundreds of people that were messaging and posting comments. Some messaged me directly, even on Facebook Messenger, and were encouraged by my story. Why? Because God will use your pain for your purpose. Ah, come on, somebody. God will use your disappointments uh, for somebody's breakthrough. And you want to give up because you messed up? Oh, come on, church. God will use it. Tell your neighbor, God will use it. Are you with me this morning? I'm about to close. Are, are you still here? Are you feeling hot? Hallelujah. Everything is maturing you. Power's on? No. Still not on. Amen. Everything is determined there to bring you to your destiny. Hallelujah. Say God uses everything. And let me just, just close with these few points. There are things that I have seen that people need to change to mature. To get to maturity. You have to get away with small-mindedness. Everyone say small-mindedness. I don't know about you, but I've come to a point where I can't handle idle chit-chat. I can't handle nitty-gritty nitty, petty things anymore. Is there anybody that, that way? You understand? When people come to me and they ranting and raving about some silly things, I want to give them a hard shot and tell them, go and seek God. You know what I'm saying? That's not a complex problem. It's small mindedness. You understand? Like don't moan and groan with me about power issues and all. You, know, you get what I'm saying? Those are small minded things. Say, put away small mindedness. You will never mature if you're small minded. That's why I tell you, get, it, get, a, get a ticket, jump on a plane and go somewhere. Go and see something different. Your mind will open. I believe me. Amen. I just went to Cape Town the other day. My paradigm opened. Even though I've been there before. You understand? Because people have small mindedness. So some people are sitting at home. And all they see is everything around them. And they are not growing. Because they are so small minded. You understand? You're only thinking about that. Not where God wants to take you. Not your destiny. Ah, come on now. 
not your purpose. Everybody say destiny. Don't miss your destiny moment. Don't miss your window of opportunity. I need a better amen today. Don't miss what God. Imagine if God is setting up everything for you to come to your destiny and you miss it because you are looking at somebody else or you're running somebody else's race. You understand what I'm saying? Come on, say a big amen. The next, next thing is you know you're maturing when you're not selfish. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. When you live selflessly, hallelujah. When you live more God conscious than self conscious, hallelujah. You will never live your life according to your purpose if you are a selfish person. Come on, somebody. When you live only for yourself and what you can get, the reason why people complain and murmur and all this kind of stuff because they are selfish. You want to switch over? They are selfish. Tell your neighbor, don't be selfish. Amen. Don't be selfish. For a moment, as we switch over, I'm going to pray off the mic, right? I'm going to pray off the mic. I want to pray one prayer point, And that is, God help me not to be selfish. I want to fulfill the plan, the purpose you have for me, oh God. Help me to fulfill my destiny. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, help me, God. Fulfill my destiny. Listen to me, church. There are many people that live their lives only because of their self. It's all about what you can get, never about what you can give. You manipulate everything, are you listening to me, around you to serve yourself. And you don't understand that it's not about serving you. It's about serving others. Tell your neighbor, serving others. You don't exist just for you. You exist to serve others. That's why you and I ought to be looking for every opportunity. To serve somebody. See a person that is so busy taking care of others. Has no time to complain about their problems. Amen. Like Sister Savvy, when you see all those prayer requests for intercession. And you see somebody in hospital having heart surgery. Somebody fighting cancer. Somebody got a situation. Like, like uh, Tristan, he was talking about his nephew Tristan. Tristan was considered dead. Am I right? They gave him time to live, the young man. And he's a young boy who we know person. And so when you see those things and you start to pray for the Tristans and you start to do something to serve them, then suddenly you're not selfish anymore. It's not about yourself. And that's what's happened to the church. Only what I can get. Not what I can give. Come on now. Let me say this to you and, I, I, and get offended or don't get offended. But let the word speak. Amen. There are people that only come to church for what we can give you. So I give you free food, you come. But I ask you to buy some beans so I can give somebody else. 
No man, I need the beans. Pastor, you know how much beans I need. I got no beans in my house. I must bring beans for somebody else. You understand what I'm saying? It's just beans as, as an example. <laughs> yep. You get my point? Some of it, some people, it just goes over their heads. It goes over their heads. They don't think, hey, I have an opportunity. That's, that's what I'm creating for you. An opportunity to be a blessing to somebody. You don't know where it's going to go. You don't know who's home. It can go over your head or you can say, hey, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of giving. I told uh, other men of God, I said, you tell me where you're giving. I want to be a part of that. You're giving to that children's thing. I phoned some pastor friends of mine. I said, tell me where I want to be a part from praise church. You don't even know, but I will take whatever God has given us and I will give it to others. Then God will take care of our needs. Amen. And our, our, uh, whatever we need in this house, do you believe God can take it? Take care of it. Listen to this. Let me close with this. Philippians 2, 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Are you with me? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Paul says, let this mind be in you. That means you got to allow it. You got to let it. Oh, help me, beloved. You got to give it permission. You got to direct your mind to not live selfishly, but selflessly. Oh, come on, somebody. The reason why we're so miserable is because we're selfish. The reason why you get depressed all the time is because you're only thinking about yourself, not others. Amen. Come on, somebody. Go and look for a need and meet the need. Hallelujah. If, listen to this. If everybody else is growing around you and you not, then there's nothing wrong with the food. Amen. God forbid this happen. But if we are all getting fat and Joshua is Joshua and Joshua is getting skinny, Nothing wrong with the food. Am I right? He's not consuming the food. You understand? Like my wife's not, she's gone thin now. We getting fat, she's gone. Because <laughs> she's on a different diet now. Amen? You understand? So it's not, and that's what happens. Uh, Elder, people say, but I'm not growing in this church. But how come I can tell you of miracles in this church? I can tell you of people that got healed in this church. People that got jobs. Come on, somebody. People that got transferred. People's children that were restored. Come on now. Marriages that were restored. Come, I'll tell you. How is it happening to them but not you? It's not the food. It's you. Now, come on, somebody. It's not the food. It's you. It's the way you have grown. So examine yourself. Are you like a child or are you like a man? See, the text doesn't say when I put away childish things, I become a man. It says when I became a man, I put away childish things. Because all you men, you can be a grown man, but still have childish ways. Isn't that so? You can still, hey Norman, isn't that true? And they say uh, uh, boys and their toys. You know. Men, grown men can still behave like little children. Looking at cars and this and if, am I right? So Paul says, you have to determine to put away. Ever say, put away. Put away. Verse 10 says, I've done away with these things. Ever say, done away. That means you have to put it away. Ever say, put it away. Oh, come on, help me, church. You got to put it away. I put it away, childish things. Tell your neighbor, put away with it. Hallelujah. That means it's not completely abolished. But it's rendered inactive in your life. That means the things that you used to hold on to before, you don't hold on to anymore. I put away childish things. I put away immature thinking. I put away immature conversation and all the small mindedness and selfishness of people. I put away those childish things. I've become a man. Hallelujah. I think like a man. Come on, somebody. I talk like a man. Hey, come on, help me, church, this morning. 
Amen. Put away childish things. Say the name of put away. Before you miss your opportunity, your destiny, put away. See church, we're about to end 2023 and go into 2024. Now, beloved, it's not going to change because the number changed. Or because you had Christmas and New Year and uh, everything happens for you. Destiny moments don't just happen. They happen because of you. You understand? You got to change. Say, I've got to change. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Raise your hands to the Lord. Mandaraba Zondorobohu. Can we worship for a moment? Lift your hands to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 